Okay, so may topic sana ako ngayon na iba. It's all about the NZXT Z63. Pero ang problema ko ngayon is uh, since ang ginamit ko na motherboard is B450 Tomahawk Max and ang uh, processor is 3700X to test this AIO with uh, Levante and uh, other uh, AIOs na meron ako. Uh, comparison ganyan. Pero nag-end up ako na, teka lang, parang wala pa yatang MSI B450 Tomahawk Max Overclocking Guide. Kumbaga, MSI in general, B450 Overclocking. So, gusto ko rin ipakita sa inyo kung paano yung uh, testing, paano yung mga ginagawa ko behind the scene ng isang video. At the same time, ituturo ko na rin sa inyo kung paano mag-overclock ng MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. Mag-overclock tayo ng 3700X processor. By the way, isingit ko lang, when you are doing overclocking or before you do overclocking, be sure to go to this advanced configuration and i-disable nyo po yung PBO. Kung baga may mga nakita na kayong videos ko dati about uh, MSI overclocking, tapos uh, gigabyte, Orus overclocking. Pero minsan, syempre nakakalito kung yung motherboard mo is iba naman. So, eto ngayon, papakitaan ko ulit kayo ng overclocking. May mga hindi na ako madidiscuss siguro. Uh, it's more on just the step by step kung paano yung ginawa ko dito sa B450 Tomahawk Max kung paano ko nagawa yung 3700X na 4.2 GHz kasi ang isang advantage din naman ng overclocking is ayan, punta tayo pasok ka sa BIOS by pressing the delete kung nakita nyo kanina, prinest ko yung delete sunod-sunod nung uh, nag-block na yung screen tapos pupunta ka ngayon yan ang una mong makikita Arsenal Gaming blah blah and then uh, settings then down using the arrow and OC so dito pwede kang mag overclock sa mild lang so ang gagawin natin ngayon is i-hit natin yung 4.2 GHz yun yung kumbaga uh, tingin ko pinaka uh, madaling i-achieve at the same time safe siguro pagdating sa temp kasi yung temperature natin as of now is uh, nasa na yung thermometer ko Temperature natin is, ambient temp, temp natin is for, uh, 32 degree Celsius. So, ganyang kainit yung uh, room natin. And then, let's go sa 4.2 GHz. So, to set 4.2 GHz sa MSI, just uh, type 42 dito sa my CPU ratio. Okay. Uh, set everything as auto. Kumbaga, auto muna. Yan yung muna yung, uh, kumbaga, let's go to the basic muna. Just uh, changing the CPU ratio. Wala tayong babaguhin V-Core. Wala tayong babaguhin SOC. Pero mamaya-maya, gagawin natin yan up to the LLC. Kumbaga, up to the part na just to make things uh, very stable. Okay. So, magre-restart yan. So, ayun, overclocking na yun. Yung ginawa natin. Stepping up the frequency of the processor manually to 4.2 GHz. So, ano yung mangyayari kung ganun lang yung gagawin natin at 4.2 GHz yung gusto nating i-achieve? So, let's go. And, ang isa sa mga pinakamadalas na software na ginagamit to check the stability of uh, the frequency and the, the uh, temperature at the same time is yung IDA64. So, you open mo yung IDA64 and then go dun sa my system stability test okay, close natin yung auto open na fraps press start so titinan natin kung yung 4.2 gigahertz ba natin is e epekto siya na hindi mo na kailangan na hindi mo na kailangan palitan yung um, voltage uh, and uh, other settings don sa yung motherboard so eto nag spike kagad sa 86 degree celsius Auto lang yun. Wala tayong binagong iba. CPU ratio lang yun. One eternity later. Uh, okay naman sa akin yung IDA64. is for the stability test. Pero very constant kasi yun eh. Uh, yung load is very constant. Unlike sa uh, Revit or sa actual na software na gagamit ka talaga ng mga rendering software or ng mga engineering or architectural software na yung rendering is nagbabago yung load nagbabago yung uh, usage ng uh, uh, CPU so pwede siyang bumaba pwedeng tumaas parang ganun-ganun siya so at the same time yung voltage 
medyo magkakaroon din ng variation during the time ng rendering. Dito, dito mo makikita talaga kung yung uh, sinet mong overclock or sinet mong uh, CPU ratio is uh, magiging stable without uh, setting the vCore set natin sa best and then render. So watch kung anong mangyayari. Pero let us see if uh, with this uh, part na we are now using a rendering software in a real world uh, benchmark. Shut down. See that? That is the effect if ang gagawin mo lang is CPU clock ratio. Using the IDA64, you may have a very long uh, stable benchmark. Pero actually in real world, it will not work. Kasi in real world, rendering is uh, iba. Hindi siya pag in-stress, pag nag-stress test ka kasi, voltage will just be regular na constant yun. Very stable din yung voltage. So, let us see if uh, by changing the V-Core, by setting the V-Core will help. Uh, for my experience, para hindi masyadong tumagal yung video natin, if you have uh, 3700X, you may set it at 1.375. I think that is the most stable. Kung... Uh, silicon lottery winner ka pagdating sa processor, kumbaga nakachamba ka ng processor na 3700X and you can set it at 1.325 then you are lucky pero for the general uh, advice 1.375 tapos bahala ka na maglaro kung gusto mong ibaba up to 1.325 or uh, itaas pero I doubt na you should uh, exceed the 1.375 volts if you are going for a manual overclocking para sa 3700X regardless kung B450 yan or X570 with my previous videos kalakalin nyo na lang dito sa channel I've overclocked 3700X at uh, I think same din 1.375 or even lower yata 1.325 okay so let's go straight to the point 1.375 what works for me yun lang muna yung pag-uusapan uh, natin okay let's go to the 1.375 Pero hindi ko po sinasabi mga kaibigan na ano ah, uh, I just don't want na masyado tayong maraming pag-uusapan at marami akong masyadong sasabihin. Okay, so let's set the V-Core and let's see what uh, uh, may happen. Pero if you will set the V-Core na rin kasi, maganda rin na iset mo na rin yung SOC. O, pagsabayin ko na lang yan. Okay, and let's go and set it at 1.1. Okay, 1.1 is the common setting na ginagamit ko. F10 and then yes. F10 is save and exit shortcut sa BIOS. Okay, the SOC 1.1 ang nasa-set ko dyan, pero I can go at 1.13, 1.15, up to 1.15, yan yung safest. Kaya nga ang overclocking mga kaibigan, it's actually trial and error. Uh, buong araw, dalawang araw. Kasi yung ginawa ko sa X570 mga kaibigan, uh, with my previous videos, hindi siya advisable dito. Kasi B450 chipset yung gamit natin ngayon. So, pwedeng mag-iba yung uh, configuration or pwedeng mag-iba yung settings na gagawin ko. So, let's go and uh, test it again. So, syempre, real-world performance na tayo kagad. Hindi na tayo gagamit ng mga stability test para uh, makita na kagad kung stable ba siya. Kasi nakita nyo na rin naman kanina when we use the uh, IDA64, ang dami, dami ko nang nasabi, ang dami ko nang nasabi, hindi pa siya nag uh, uh, siya shutdown. Pero nung ginamit natin itong Revit, Wala pa yatang isang sentence yung nasabi ko kanina. Nag-shutdown na. So, let us see if it will work with um, eto, Revit. So, at idle, nasa 1.368 pero ngayon na mag-full load na siya, 1.376 1.376 yung idle niya Ngayon naka-load na siya 1.368 na. Okay, so 1.368 volts. Ang ginagalaw mo lang dapat CPU ratio, V-core, and SOC. Lalong-lalo na kung ang gusto mong uh, frequency na ilagay is uh, mga around uh, 4.2 GHz, which is ang 4.2 GHz is mataas na kung all cores ang isiset mo at 4.2 GHz always. And here we are. We are trying to render the uh, architectural... Uh, project so it's I think uh, bahay yata to Oo. so using Revit Revit is one of the software na kaya talagang sagarin yung uh, 
CPU mo. And by the way, when you are trying to do an overclocking, mga kaibigan, always have the HW monitor open. Kahit paano meron kang uh, temperature monitoring software. So dito sa uh, CPU, uh, sa HW monitor, makikita mo dito, uh, set mo lagi dun sa may temperatures, dito sa may taas, which is nagpapakita dyan yung uh, MOSFET and CPU. So ayan mga kaibigan, very uh, straightforward yung ating video. Walang masyadong keme, walang masyadong pinag-uusapan. Samahan nyo lang akong hintayin kung uh, yung mga pinagsasabi ko ba is uh, tama or kung ano ba talaga yung may experience mo in real world. And ganito po yung ginagawa ko pag uh, behind the camera, uh, testing, testing, trial and error. Actually, yung dahilan din kung bakit uh, gumawa ako ng video na to, ng B450 Tomahawk Max, is uh, napakabihira kasi ang nagpakita ng B450 uh, chipset overclocking, manual overclocking. And uh, well, siguro dahil sa point na wala siya masyadong effect in terms of uh, uh, performance. Pero yun nga, tulad na nasabi ko kanina, kung ikaw po ay uh, nasa rendering, video rendering, architectural, engineering, or animation, malaki din po ang impact ng uh, manual overclocking. Yung 2 uh, minutes, 3 minutes na matitipid mo for a 10 minutes rendering, malaking bagay yun. Eh, how much more kung 8 hours yung i-render mo? Alam po yan ng mga nasa field ng trabaho na yan. Pwedeng abutin pa sila ng isang araw, dalawang araw, para lang mag-render ng isang project. And uh, kung hindi maganda yung uh, performance na kanyang processor, and he want to maximize it, kailangan niya mag-manual overclock. And that 2 minutes, if i-multiply mo pag 8 hours or 12 hours or 24 hours yung i-render mo, di ibig sabihin oras din yung pwede mong matipid kung sakaling naka-manual overclock ka compared sa hindi manually overclock. Pero yes, actually, pagkatapos ng video na to, panuorin nyo po yung Kraken Z63 kasi marami rin pa akong babagitin, marami rin akong sasabihin sa video na yan kung yung about sa impact ng AIO at the same time impact kung maganda yung AIO na ginamit mo uh, the importance of having this kind of uh, ambient temperature yung uh, room temperature mo yung mga bagay na yan i-discuss ko po once na ilalabas na po natin yung review ng NZXT Kraken Z63 so we will not just be talking about this AIO we will be talking about um, other uh, topics din ambient kung gaano yung impact ng ambient room temperature dito sa Pilipinas lalong lalo na nasa tropical country tayo with other countries pwedeng very minimal lang uh, some are exponential kumbaga sobrang layo significant pero dito sa Pilipinas mas significant lalong lalo na kung hindi ka po naka aircon sa bahay nyo tulad ko pong wala pang pambili ng aircon Okay, so ayun, nagkita nyo naman siguro mga kaibigan, nag-shutdown siya. So ang gagawin natin ngayon is, isasalang natin ngayon yung pinakahuli. Para at is, uh, ano, ano, ang dahilan ko bakit ko kasi pinapakita sa inyo mga kaibigan to, is uh, for you guys to have the idea of how the overclocking goes, uh, you may just uh, set the CPU ratio. Okay, so let's go to the last part. So go down at the bottom. Bago yung core voltage, makikita mo yan yung digit all power, digital power. And then, uh, and then uh, go to the CPU load line calibration. So, ito po yung pinakahuling uh, ginagalaw ko for uh, most of the motherboards in terms of manual overclocking. Pero, uh, it is just one. Marami pang pwedeng galawin. Well, for this part, mga kaibigan, CPU load line calibration is, uh, syempre, nakita nyo naman na siguro, if you've been in this channel for a while now, nakita nyo na sa mga previous videos ko, na naipakita ko na rin to at na-discuss ko na rin to, mga kaibigan. So, alam nyo na siguro na ito yung isa sa mga pinakahuli kong ginagalaw. And, uh, let's go to the mode uh, 4. Mode 4 muna tayo. So, bakit mode 4? Uh, it's just like naka-auto lang siya. Pero mas fix nga lang compared dun sa auto. Sa auto kasi yung voltage masyadong magalaw. And uh, pag iseset mo talaga sa mode 4, then uh, kahit pa paano, uh, mas uh, mababa yung tolerance. 
So, mas stable po yung kakalabasan. In short, mas stable yung kakalabasan ng uh, overclocking natin. So, let's go and check. Actually, nagalaw ko na to ka Actually, nagawa ko na to mga kaibigan. Pinapakita ko lang sa inyo yung impact. Kung ito lang yung gagalawin natin, CPU ratio, uh, SOC, V-Core. And uh, na-discuss ko na rin naman ito mga kaibigan sa mga previous videos natin. Ang, ang uh, pinag-uusapan na lang natin ngayon is uh, how about if iba yung motherboard mo? How about kung MSI yung motherboard mo? Especially kung B450 siya. So, yun na lang yung kumbaga inaalam natin ngayon mga kaibigan. Ano yung magiging setting mo kung 3700X or most likely 3600X or 3600 yung processor. So, let's do this mga kaibigan. Let's set it to rendering with 4.2 GHz, 1.375 volts, 1.1 SOC, and mode 4 pagdating naman sa LLC. Alamin natin ngayon mga kaibigan kung totoo ba na pag ginalaw mo yung LLC is mas magiging stable yung magiging kakalabasan or yung overclocking mo. Sa totoo lang mga kaibigan, mas stable po siya. And uh, ayun, makikita nyo dito. Real world, this uh, overclocking guide also is uh, very applicable sa ating lahat, lalong lalo na sa ating mga nasa Pilipinas. Dahil yung uh, room temperature ko is 32 degrees Celsius. Kumbaga, uh, typical tropical country ambient temperature kung malamig yung panahon doon ako mag-overclock kung uh, mainit no overclocking pero sa totoo lang mga kaibigan may papakita ko yan with this NZXT J63 video actually siningit ko lang naman tong video na to mga kaibigan for you guys to have an idea also on uh, what I do behind the scene at the same time uh, I don't know if mauunang may upload tong J63 tapos etong video na to pero at least guys you will have an idea also Okay, so that's it mga kaibigan for a very quick overclocking guide for our MSI B450 Tomahawk Max and uh, 3700X. So ayun, LLC, load line calibration, yung pinakahuli nating sinet. So you can even go for a mode 3 or mode 2. Uh, don't go mode 1. Okay na po yung mode T or okay na po yung mode 2 or mode 3. Uh, and uh, for me, I set it to for, uh, mode 4 since... Uh, It's just as uh, much as the same as the auto setting. Uh, mas uh, controlled nga lang yung voltage. So, we will be talking more about overclocking uh, in depth once we go to that topic about V-drop and everything. Pero, ayun, marami pa tayong pag-uusapan kasi. Kaya, hanggang dito lang muna tayo. At least you have an idea how to overclock a B450 Tomahawk Max. And, yes, if you know more about the... Uh, The settings na sinet ko dito or research more about the settings na ginawa ko dito, you may just check it online or check my previous videos. Nandyan po lahat yung mga sinabi ko. Pag newbie ka pa lang, kung bago ka pa lang sa overclocking, you may check some of those videos. Malaking tulong po yung mga yun for you guys to have more ideas on how I did this overclocking with MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. Pero at least you have now a guide for those guys na merong B450 at saka 3700X or 3600X or 3600. Alright, so for more tutorials and videos, guides like this, feel free to subscribe dahil marami pa po tayong ipapakita dito sa ating channel. Thank you guys and have a nice day ahead.